Life is a journey made up of experiences, some good, some bad, some happy, some sad. We may all be different, but we're connected through the fact that no matter who we are, our stories all have hills and valleys. So tonight, we dedicate our premiere episode to those who discover the paradox that the key to living your best life lies often in lowering your voice. The journey continues, everybody. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's show. We are so happy to be back in your homes for another season. We thank you for lobbying for our return and we thank our family at Grace Foods, Grace Kennedy Money Services and GK Insurance without whom this return would not be possible. We are especially happy to be with you during this time of COVID when we all need a little upliftment and a little positivity for our spirit. And as always, please remember that you can join tonight's conversation by using the hashtag SimSoulSessions. Tonight, I am honored, I'm happy to have in the safe space for our season premiere, premier Jamaican talent, songbird, Tessan Chin, a sweet soul whose voice has touched the entire world. Tonight, she shares the highs and lows of her journey since winning the international competition, The Voice, in 2013, and how it took getting everything she thought she wanted to show her that she needed so much more. My Tespo, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mama. It's so good to have you here. It's good to be here. Look at you barely talking, <laughs> you know, when you open your mouth, you're so like... <laughs> Um, how you doing, first of all? I'm good. All things considered, with everything that's going on, I, I can't complain. Thank right. you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Awesome. I'm, I'm good to be back in the space. I'm happy mm -hmm. to be back in this environment so we can spread some love and some warmth and some joy during COVID time. So here we go. Um, the sit down feels a little deja vu -ish, don't it? Yeah. Don't it? <laughs> Because when you came off that plane, uh -huh. when you won The Voice, and you, you came were, back yeah. home, uh -huh. we sat. And I you was were the first person I saw and sat and spoke to when I came off of that plane. And I remember that And forever. here we are again. Here we are again. So many years seven, later. Seven years ago. And so much has happened. <laughs> so eh? very many okay. things have happened. So let's talk about them. <laughs> let's go back. 2013 rewind you've spoken about this so many times but mm -hmm. let's go back here because this is the pivotal point where everything started to happen 2013 the voice you blow away international competition you win this competition and you have just about everything you want right mm -hmm. or so or, it would seem or, or <laughs> did you or did you the thing is you know when something like that happens to you on that scale I don't think there's anything you can ever do to really prepare for it. You dream about this happening. You work hard all your life to have that sort of um, recognition and to have the accolades and the, the opportunities to go around the world and, and sing and share your gift with people. But nothing prepares you for everything else that comes with it. If it was just about singing, there were Chris. <laughs> but everything else that comes with, you know, being in that space is... Um, was up, it was for sure a, 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 a trip. Expectations, ours. Expectations, yours. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, lack of privacy. Mm -hmm. What else was packed in there? Uh, a lot of living up to do. A lot, a lot of, um, a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. A lot of self-doubt. A lot of, um, is, this, is this really happening? Can I live up to what people are saying I can be? Mm -hmm. You know, is this going to be um, everything that people think that I can be? Um, can I do that? Am I capable? And, you know, just going through the journey and, and like I said, to, to, to see it on one end, the singing part and the performing is one thing. The busy schedule, the lack of privacy, mm -hmm. the feeling that you are owned by everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, was something else that I wasn't quite prepared for at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. And so 
How did that affect your craft and your love for what it was that had so genuinely and just effortlessly come from you at that point? At that point, it was not so much about singing for me anymore, which is something that truly, it took away that joy, mm -mm. you know, because that's- We don't that, like to take no, away the joy. it doesn't, because like you said, when things start to become about expectations and when things start to become about um, numbers mm -hmm. and things start to become about keeping up a facade or, you know, trying to, to please everybody, it lands you in a very um, lonely, <laughs> but also a very questionable place where you're just like, what on earth is going on? Right. And you don't have a moment to breathe. And mm -hmm. I remember I remember one time looking in the mirror and I said to Tammy, Sissy, I don't I, I don't recognize my reflection because I just didn't have a moment to process everything that was happening. And this is in no way complaining, you know, I am I realize how very blessed I am to have been given the opportunities that I have been given. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. But it was also very much a lesson in, well, okay, you have got to learn while on the job. You know? Speaking of learning while on the job, and um, just going through all of it, you speak a while ago about how, while this is happening to you, and we're looking at you, you look so happy, you're really mm -hmm. lonely. Mm -hmm. um, so you're falling out of love with singing because of the business of it. Mm -hmm. And then your relationship starts mm -hmm. to falter. Mm -hmm. And you are intensely and personally mm -hmm. very, pr you don't want your <laughs> business there, <Daryl. laughs> And that's so my you, business. That's, that's your business. <laughs> and now it's everybody's absolutely, business. Eh? Absolutely. Oh. So you feel like you're failing at the singing. I and then now your relationship is failing. So so we are looking at joy, but you're, you're experiencing joy and pain. Everything one time. I felt like I was imploding. Oh, my God. You know, and on top of... When you are in that sort of a, a job, in that sort of a position where you have... You know, the whole, it feels anyway, like you have the whole world looking at you. You have to be able to count on a place to come home and be safe. And you have to feel that safety and you have to have that peace. And um, it was very difficult for me to find the peace and the safety there. And it was very difficult for me to, um, to be my authentic self. And... If I may say, it wasn't just about that, but I felt it was the same from my, my then husband. And it was almost like we're doing an injustice to each other because here's the thing. I believe in working things out and I believe for fighting for your love and your marriage. But I also believe that if I cannot love you in the way that you deserve to be loved and vice versa, then that's an issue, you know? <laughs> No, because somebody's always going to be asking somebody to change. And that's that, you know, and without going too into it, because I am still very protective of Kof too, because this is his life Absolutely. that was out on blast too, God Absolutely. bless him. And he had to face the wrath and the, 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 the accusations and everybody throwing around these crazy rumors. And my, it was just, and then on top of that, of course, I feel responsible for that too, you know? So it was just an absolute traumatic event, for Girl. sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're gonna talk about how you got past it. Mm -hmm. Move past it and found love again. <laughs> um, but God you is speak good. about, you know, being in a difficult place and not being able to find anywhere that was home. Mm -mm. But we, we spoke to somebody who was home for you, has always been mm -hmm. home for you. Have a look. Hi sister, I had to jump in the car to be able to get some quiet time to be able to say what I have to say to you. And to say, what can I possibly say to you? I do not remember my life without you. I cannot remember a important time in my life or a devastating fall that you haven't been there for. You have been with me through the good, the bad, the ugly, the happy, the sad, and it's been such a beautiful blessing to have a built-in best friend like you. The most non-judgmental, unbiased, loving uh, person somebody could ever have as their sister um, to be there by their side. 
you showed up for me in so many ways, you know, and even now with my children, you show up as a second mother. And what a gift and a blessing that is to all of us. You know, Tess, you're always saying how our best days are ahead of us. You're always reminding me, Tam, your best days are ahead of you. Well, girl, I am here reminding you right now that your best days are ahead of you. And I cannot wait to see what else you do, what else you dream of, what else you accomplish. And I promise you, I'm going to be right by your side, cheering you on every step of the way. I'm so proud of you and I love you. Love you, sissy. This is the girl just too early to have <laughs> me too crying. Much. The lashes ain't gonna stay on. Let me give you a chance to collect Ooh. yourself. We're gonna take a break, come back and talk some more with Tess about heartbreak lessons and the road to healing. We'll be right back. It's too early for you to be crying. Girl. At least it's not me. We're back with you guys and Tess is still here with us. So jumping in, um, spoke about your divorce before we went to break. I was looking, um, looking you up on Wikipedia, doing some research. <laughs> it's um, questionable. <laughs> yes, but this part is true. Um, and I found it ironic because it was literally a footnote, like one sentence. Tessan got married in X and divorced in Y. Mm -hmm. And it took me back to our conversation we had this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. That footnote, was not even close mm -mm. to what you had to dig and traverse mm -mm. through. Mm -mm. Um, how hard was that point in your life? Oh my God. Um, here's the thing about divorce or any sort of, it's a, it's a loss, it's a breakup, it's a, dare I say, it's almost like a death. Yes. Because it's a ripping apart of two lives that have made all these plans and that identify as each other's person. I have your name, your family is my family, it's the ripping apart of families. Um, and it's almost as if you have to learn to do everything in your way all over again because the person that you woke up beside for the past how many years, the person that you told everything you to your best friend and you know he was mm -hmm. very much my best mm -hmm. friend for before we were a couple. Um, it was one of the hardest, most um, mm -hmm. things to deal with. But then the flip side of that, I felt guilty because I also felt this incredible sense of release and relief that I, um, that I knew that I had to do what was right for me, okay. you know? And I knew that I had to, to take that step however hard it was, it was just, I couldn't, I couldn't continue to live in that, in, in that situation mm -hmm. or, or telling myself that things were so when they were not, mm -hmm. you know, and it's have to come at some point. And, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that for me in particular, I take a while to come to things, you know, I think very hard and long about the things I'm going to do. I don't make willy nilly decisions. Like I'm very much, you're deliberate. In I'm a you're deliberate. I'm yeah. an intentional person, yeah. right? So I think for a while my my head knew, mm -hmm. but my heart was not willing to accept that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was the the it's, it was it's like a continuous breakup because every day it chips up, chips at you a little bit more, you know? So it oh. was it was definitely and that girl, Tammy Chin Mitchell literally scooped me up and now that I look back at it you know she had just had Jax Jax was fresh <laughs> he was only a couple of months and she just scooped me up I, I literally lived with her and Wayne you know for a little bit before I could even think about like going out and getting sorted in that and, and doing all of that and I sister I will never be able to repay her for that. I will never be able to tell you just how much I love you. I think Lord she, Jesus. I think she kind of knows. <laughs> I hope I so. That's knows. my girl. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get to the place where you were able to allow your heart to go back to love again? You, oh, you said it was, was a lot of time on a, your knees oh. and praying and journaling and how did you get that? Care. It was two and a half years before I 
could let anybody even in that space. And, you know, you have people that you talk to and you're interested in whatever. And they don't even get me started on this. They come in a date. Let's not. <laughs> I said, I'm going to meet somebody at the supermarket, the airport, or the bank. Because me not going away. <laughs> me not see nobody. <laughs> me is a hermit. <laughs> so I was like, God. We are trusting and leading on to your understanding because I don't know how I'm going to meet my love. <laughs> but but God, you had already met him? I had already met him. I had already known him, you know, so. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just wow. Our mothers are actually best friends I from know, like high like... school. So I kind of grew up on, you know, on in veranda and seeing each other, our families, our friends, you know. I did so. not know. Oh, but you see, when God have a plan, he does have a plan. And let me tell you something. Like I said, there were days when my big sister, my big sister Terry, Terry. who came down to stay with mm -hmm. me, because she has been through her fair share of things. She just look at me and say, and she'd say, Tessie, what's right with today? And I was like, What do you mean? She goes, what is right with today? Is it a cup of coffee that tasted good? Is it a nice hot shower? Was it the fact that you slept well? Is it seeing somebody that you haven't seen what's right now and, and gratitude for that and gratitude like it really helped me to build that bridge back to feeling good and even to walk on a treadmill for five minutes because i literally just mm -hmm. it 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 took the breath out of yes, me I, I kind of know you know and the <laughs> kind of the kind of breath where you function you know like i go about my life but you see at the end of the day when you close your door and it's just left. you it hits you in the gut mm -hmm. and then the questions come and though, did I do the right thing? Uh, what am I thinking? Am I crazy? Like, what is going to happen now? Like, I'm this age. Oh, my gosh. I want to have kids someday. Is that ever going to happen? Like, all these things plague you. You know, when everybody is good, they've gone home, and it's just you and your thoughts on God, you know? Well, so, let's, talk, let's talk about the God yes. aspect, and let's talk about the kids aspect. Yeah. Because something you said to me when we spoke, I had to write it down. You said, God restores. Amen. And he I felt does. that like from my head to my toe point. He does. Um, and I asked you today about a song that centers you when you feel like everything mm -hmm. is topsy turvy. And mm -hmm. you said, Mahalia Jackson's, Jackson I believe. Uh, I believe. Yeah. There's a line in that song that says, I believe for everyone who goes astray, someone will come and show the way. Mm -hmm. I think that was Zaya for you because now she's in your life. Yeah. You're her mother. Mm -hmm. You want to write again. Mm -hmm. You want to sing again. Mm -hmm. Tell mm -hmm. me about that evolution. Well, you know, I, I have to really give props to Bran, who is my husband now Brandon. also. Yes. Because I have done a lot of soul searching with him also, you know. And um, for me... We had a conversation and I was speaking about when I was pregnant with Zaya and we we're speaking about this and what she'll do and what she'll be and what she'll see. And, you know, he said something that immediately like lit up my spirit. And he said, I don't want to tell Zaya how great I was. I want to show her. Oh. How great. And I thought to myself, you damn right. I don't want to look at my daughter and say, you know, say your mother did this and I did that. I want to show my girl that oh. mommy can do it. You can do it too. You know, and I, I honestly believe like, oh, my baby. Mm -hmm. Hi, mommy. Mm -hmm. They unlock something within you. And it's a fierceness and it's, 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 it's just a need for me to be able to show up for her. Yes but also myself, yes. because I cannot show up for Zaya if I don't show you up for first. me. You first. Yeah. You first. Put on that mask, girl. Yeah. Before you put, let's tell you in the plane, you know. Yes, oxygen <laughs> after yourself first. That's so right. So restoration, restoration. Restoration, I, I believe that. that. Yep. God bless you, Tess. Thank, Thank you, Mom. So, you have a legion of fans. Holy, your family is big. Lovely you guys are like family. this. Yeah. Um, and they wanted to let you know how much they love you. It's been such a joy to have known you all these years. You've always been compassionate, you've always been empathetic, and always caring so much about other people. Some people come into our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. You are one of those people who will be in my life for a lifetime. You are the true definition of what true friendship means.
Outside of being this ridiculously talented vocalist, easily one of my favorites, you're an amazing soul and very, very funny. It's very hard to, um, to stay angry around you. Um, you just always have this way of um, making people smile. You do magic with your voice, but as a person, you're a wonderful human being. I remember us both being asked once how long we had been friends. And in unison, we both answered many lifetimes. The truth is you have been and will always be an incredibly special friend to me. Thanks for being such a faithful friend. Don't know what I would do without you, you wise woman, wise beyond your years. Our backyard conversations will forever be one of my favorite things to do. Miss you and love you loads, my sis, and I just want you to know what an amazing young lady you are and how much I respect you and admire who you are today. Hi Tess, love you, I'm super proud of you. Can't wait to see where this journey takes you. You have been uh, an inspiration since I was in seventh grade. When you went on to, you know, the, the, the voice, that's where I was like, yo, she did it, you know? And if she can do it as a yard, then he can do it too. You've always been such a, such a kind person, a person that was all about love and that inspired me in many ways than one. Right, so hey, hey, Tessan, um, aka Chinita Gudas, that's what I should be calling you. You're on the Sim Soul Session stage, our oh, nice place for me. The coach is very nice and just like easy for sit out, you know. You are a really great woman. You have such poise, you have such elegance, such grace and compassion for people. And you are so humble. You are a genuine soul and a kind spirit. And we need more of that in the world today. I love you very much. You are an amazing human being, and you are just a wonderful mom, sister, wife, and you know, an example to us all. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I bet you're surprised by all these things, eh? Just want to tell you how very proud I am of you. Great mom, great wife, great daughter, just a great person overall. You always said you want to touch people's hearts. That's what you've done, all from you were a little girl, even till now. You continue to touch people's hearts, and especially mine. I remember when mommy found out that she was pregnant. She was pulling out her ear. But you know something? God do not make mistakes. We have five kids, and guess what? You are the ice cream on the cake. You are the one that brings us all together. Just want to tell you how much I love you, I care for you, and I'll always be here for you. Love you, Tess. Where do I begin? Besides being your number one fan and the ultimate supporter, I'm humbled and lucky to call you my wife. You're such an amazing mother, and uh, I mean, a phenomenal wife and a true inspiration to everyone, including myself. Never stop shining, never stop reaching for your dreams. I'll always be with you. Thank you for being the best auntie in the world. Ever, ever, in my life, in my life. I could ever have. I, all right, so ever, no, bye, bye, bye. I will always be in your corner. Love you, sis. I love you so much. Kisses. I'm so honored to be a part of it all. Love you. Much love. Peace and love on all great things. Continue to shine and remember that your best is always ahead. Thank you, my darling. I love you. I love you so much, Tess. Me? I can't believe you got my husband on camera. Sure did. <laughs> my producer don't play games. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Boy, Girl, dry your eyes. We're going to be right back to wrap things up with Tess and do our affirmation. Soon come.
All right, folks, wrapping it up with Tess. Tess, I'm going to ask you before we go just to say um, a word to your fans, a word to the folks who are watching, who supported you, who want to know that you're okay, who may be struggling with their own relationship, their own difficulties. Um, I'm going to show you a picture and you tell me how it is that these folks can get to the place where you are No, Go ahead and talk them through. <sighs> See her there? She where? looks so happy and so <laughs> carefree. Do you know what? Everything in life is a journey and we have to go through it, but you do go through. Through. You go through it. You don't stop where you feel at your worst. And I know some days are hard. I know some days are full of questions, full of regrets, and I shoulda, coulda, woulda, but it's done. Guess what? You're here. You have a purpose. You have a blessing upon you, whether or not you know it and things will get better. I am living proof that God can restore you. I am living proof that love can liberate you. Love can, can, can restore and just put you in a place that you never thought you'd be in, a time frame that you never thought could happen. I never for a million years thought a year or two ago that I would be with my love and have my baby girl and here I am today as a living example, and God is no respecter of persons. So hold your head up, be faithful, be courageous, because it takes courage. But, and I believe this, I know you've heard it a couple times tonight, but your best days are ahead of you. They're not behind you. There is purpose for your life, and this is part of you finding that purpose. I love you, God bless you and keep you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have anything more to say. Can we just <laughs> go to the affirmation, please? Thank you. Ah, oh boy. So here we go, folks. Life is a series of steps. It's a ladder of learning. Each rung is another level from which we can extract meaning and purpose. And that's really what we all want. Meaning, purpose, happiness. All so easy to say, but for many of us, so hard to achieve. Sometimes we think we know who or what makes us happy until we learn that, nope, that ain't it. We can't find our happiness in someone or something else. And we will never find our happiness until we are happy with ourselves. Happiness doesn't happen to you. You create it. And it is a conscious decision. It takes breaking up with the things, the thoughts, the actions, and the people that cause perpetual pain to accept the things that have happened and make peace with the fact that each of those things are part of a bigger plan. The happiest people, they don't have everything. They just choose to make the best of what they have and the most of what they've been through. And we have to learn that as selfish as it sounds, happiness means that we have to put ourselves above everything else because it is in loving yourself first that everything else will fall into place. Tonight we are affirming, I am not here to merely exist. I will love myself first and learn from my missteps to unlock my God-given right to happiness. That is our soul food for this week. I am so glad you were able to kick us off. This was the perfect way to get the season started. Thank you, Tess. It was an honor. God bless you. God bless you. And your beautiful too. family. Thank you. We're here next week, folks, with another story of the power of the human spirit. So until then, every blessing, and please remember to count your blessings.